In this tutorial in Cyberlink PowerDirector, I'd like to share some tips on stacking effects. We're going to look at how to add effects, some more than once, which technically you can't do unless you know the workaround. Please look at the following example. What you're going to see is this clip of the vehicles going down the road into the sunrise. And it's a nice clear scene. We're going to add a lots of fog and blur. And we'll show you how to do that in the following example. Please look at it and then we'll give you some techniques that you can use. Now that I have my clip on track number one of the vehicles on the road, first thing I want to do is get into my effect room. So I can click on the effect on the left side or press the F4 function key. And I want to choose a subcategory to make the selection faster. So the first effect I want to use is a Gaussian blur. I'm going to click the down arrow and that's in the subcategory of styles. So I'll click on style. They're alphabetical. I'll go down to the G's. And here I have my Gaussian blur. I'll take and drag and drop that on track number one. Now what I want to do is I want to blur the horizon. I want to make it look like there's fog and it's very indistinct only in the horizon and then it will come toward the viewer, toward the camera. So what I want to do is modify that. So I'm going to click on the effect button above the timeline and we'll change a couple things about that. Now the default mask type is a box and the box is the size of the entire screen. So what I want to do is I want to modify that. So I'm going to click on the modify button, click on this, and we're going to change it. Now I have used the box in the lower right corner to add my grid lines. And so I'm going to take and drag the handle and we're going to raise that. So I have basically the horizon and a little bit of the mountains in the blur. That looks pretty good. I'll click on OK. I also want to feather that quite a bit so it blends in pretty well. And I think I'm done with that. But I want it to start out really blurry and become less blurry. So I'm going to keyframe that. I'll click on the keyframe button. I need to make sure my playhead's on the left side. Now I'm only going to keyframe the degree of blur. So we're going to start out in the teens. 15 looks pretty good, pretty blurry there. It's really foggy in the distance. And then we're going to move ahead in time a bit. And then I'm going to go back a little, move farther ahead. And we'll set a third keyframe and that will be down to zero. So it'd be crystal clear in the distance. So the the impression I'm trying to give is that it gets really foggy and then it clears up far away. So that looks pretty good. We'll close those settings out. Now I also want to blur with a different timetable the area in the front of the screen. But if I try to add that same Gaussian blur again, watch what happens. If I drop it to the clip, it says, oh, you've already got one. You can't have two. What do I do? I need to add some more tracks, effect tracks. So I give myself room, I'll right click anywhere where I have room and click on add tracks. Now the default is one video track, one audio track and no effect tracks. Well, I'm going to change that. I'll zero out the video, zero out the audio, and I will add three tracks for effect above track two and click on okay. Now look, I have three effect tracks. The first one I'm going to use to add this Gaussian blur and I'll make it the length of uh, about the same length as our video. And now what I'm going to do is modify it. I'll click on the modify button. I'm going to change the mask area to compensate for the area I didn't use before. So I'm going to take that top part and drag down a bit. It doesn't hurt if they overlap. I want to make sure that I have blur on everything. I'm going to overlap a little bit there and click on OK. And I'm going to feather this as well. Now what I want it to be is I want it to start out more clear. And so I'm going to keyframe it where the it starts out clear and then the fog rolls in. We're going to move our playhead to the left. And so it starts out not too bad and then the fog starts coming in. So we'll crank it up. 15 or 16, 
move over here. I'll right click. I'll do duplicate previous keyframe. We'll move over again and then it starts to slowly get a little better. So it's on its own timetable, separate from the background. And so we've, we've blurred the foreground. It finally becomes clear later on. In fact, I think I'm going to move this farther down. So that's number two. So we've used the same effect twice in two different ways. But we've got others we want to use as well. I'm going to turn that off. We want to go to another effect. I'll click the down arrow and we're going to go into the particle subcategory. And we're going to find fog. Again, they're alphabetical. And I can take fog and drop that as well on my actual video clip. And now we have some fog rolling in and out. If we view that and on our screen and play it. Besides the blurring going on, we have some fog, but it's not enough and it's too consistent. Again, I can't add more fog right on the video clip, but I'm going to take fog. I will and take this and put this on effect track number two. So I, I don't want all the fog to be there for the full duration. So I'm going to shorten that and these will end at different times. So I'll take fog number two. I'm going to modify it. What I want to change is a direction. So in this case, the, the direction of the one is 50. I'll change this one to like 160, 170. And I'm going to change the speed. I'm going to slow it down. Then I'm done with that. I'm going to take a third effect of fog. Drag it down. It will end sooner. I'm also going to modify that. I'm going to speed it up. And I'm going to change a direction down to like a two. And so now I have these independent waves of fog moving in as it were and ending in the, in the course of the clip. And that makes it look much more realistic than just using one effect one time. So if we move back to the beginning and play this, we're going to see we have the blurry background. We have the foreground. We have the fog coming in. The background clears up. The fog dissipates. Things finally start to get a little better over time. Again, we haven't rendered it, so it's a little bumpy here, but you get to see the effect of it as the fog moves in and then the fog moves away, affecting the, both the foreground and the background and the entire production. So we have layered two effects multiple times to try to tell the story the way we want to in this section of our video. Mm -hmm.